everybody happy new year and welcome to the first edition of 2017's ozone podcast unfair and partial sports i am your host and i am happy to say that i made it to 2017 omar miller i'm here with my brother still from the same mother terry miller hello world hello hello so it's going down we made the new year resolutions all abound had some good food, some ribs, some bird. Ribs. Rib, ribs or rib tips? I had ribs. I wish I had some tips right now. What sauce? Medium sauce. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it would be muy delicioso. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot to talk about. We took a week off. I mean, can we get a week off? Are y'all mad at us? You missed us, didn't you? I know that you did. This year, we're coming at you live. We got more guests. We have more topics. We're going to introduce a visual component but life is good, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We are in college bowl season. Uh, we got we got a lot of things going on with that. For the locals, SC is playing Penn State. Ronda Rousey got knocked out. Why well, you got to bring that up? Oh, I got to bring it up. I'm, I'm sorry. Too early. I'm the host. It's too soon. I got to bring it up. Uh, we got the NFL playoffs. Everything is set. The brackets are set. We got uh, a lot of coaches getting fired in the NFL. Thank goodness. Yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, and we have uh, we have George Carl. I, I want to talk about this later on too. George Carl, the ex coach of the Nuggets and the Sacramento Kings. You know what? I feel like he said something very important that's getting swept under the rug behind the bickering that he put out between Kenyon Martin and Carmelo Anthony. And uh, I want to talk about that. And that has to do with steroid allegations in the NBA. But we want to start off with uh, a very special guest, a friend of the Ozone. We have someone uh, waiting in the wings. We have all-pro Arizona Cardinal defensive tackle Calais Campbell. He's calling in, folks. He heard about the Ozone. He said, Big O, you got a podcast? What? How can I be down? I said, man, let me see if I can fit you in. Uh, do what I can do. And <laughs> Pull a couple strings. I had, to put, I, had, I had to make a call. So you called Mama. So I called Mama. Mama <laughs> said he was cool. He came over. He ate up all the food. And, uh, uh, you know, after that season, uh, 2016 season wasn't the best. But now he's here with us. He's going to have a conversation with us, and we're going to cover these other topics. So let's just jump right on into it. What do you guys say? Calais Campbell live on the Ozone. What's popping, man? What's going on, man? Man, happy new year, yeah, bro. Happy new year, brother. This is, this is my brother year, Terry's on us with us, too. How you feeling? Oh, man, God is good, man. I'm blessed, very blessed. Man. All the time. <laughs> and all the time. God's good. God is good. <laughs> there it is. God is good. Life is good, man. We made it to 2017. I really appreciate having you on, man. I know this is uh this is a bittersweet day for a lot of teams in the NFL and a lot of players. I mean, you still a stud and still a monster, and yet it was a disappointing season, man. Today, today you guys uh wrapped everything up, turned into pads. Tell me what what's the what's the vibe like? Kids like talk about the vibration nowadays. What's that vibe like uh at the, <laughs> <laughs> What was that vibe like down in in Arizona at the clubhouse? Yeah, man, a lot of silly cutter with us, man. The way we played the last couple of weeks, we felt like we played that way, man. We, you know, we could be Super Bowl champs, but we just didn't figure it out soon enough. We lost too many games early based off of, you know, just a couple of bad plays here and there. I mean, we were in the ball games, and we just didn't find a way to win the tough ones early, and they came back to bite us at the end. It did, and you know what? That's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. You know, it's a trip, man. You guys had spurts of greatness this year. There were times, I, I, man, you are my man. I picked the Arizona Cardinals defense in my fantasy league you for sure did. because of you. <laughs> <laughs> I got love for you, man, and and it, and it's a trip because I would watch the games, and it's, it's just it's an accurate summation. You know, I mean, even the first game against the Pats, man. I mean. This is a tight game. You're talking about tight games. Some games you guys came in and just completely and totally locked them up and clamped down. And other games, be it the offense or the defense, it just seems like, I don't know, you guys didn't seem to have that same magic as last year. In my opinion, football seems to be the hardest sport to to maintain year to year because of the injuries and whatnot. I, I was just wondering, on the candid tip, do you feel like the Amazon show had anything to do with it, or did you just feel like you just guys just couldn't catch the rhythm, or what? Yeah, no, I don't think that had anything to do with it at all. I think really what it came down to it is this, uh, you know, uh, one guy made a mistake in a critical time, and then once you lose that first one, 
you know, and then the momentum slows down. You know, you bring it brings you down a little bit. When that confidence is high and you're and you winning those games, man, you just continue to build that that momentum and the energy, and uh, to get things happen. But when you when you uh, lose that, you know, you kind of going into that, you know, the, the, I don't want to say a shell, but, you know, just things don't go well for you. And when things don't go well for you, man, it just, it carries over because momentum goes both ways. Sure so when it's good, <laughs> sure you know. So. Yeah. And confidence is a monster in sports. It sure man. is. It's in life. I try to tell people all the time when I speak to the kids and whatnot, believing that you can do something is even more important than your actual ability to do it. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I think you can even see that Donald Trump taught us that all this in 2016. <laughs> <laughs> to be yeah, unfortunately, too. <laughs> <laughs> but he believed he could. It's like the little engine that could, you know. And uh, yeah, you know, I it is what it is. I'm I'm happy that you are you had a, a, a good season. You're in one piece. The team right. is moving forward. Um, I'm happy to see David Johnson is in one piece. I was really surprised, man. That injury Dude, that was, was unbelievable bad yesterday. Man, he's a he's a strong dude, man. Got strong tendons because the way that that looked, man, I just that looked so bad. And it looks so bad, it. so bad. Wow, man, he yeah. must, his stretching regimen must be incredible. He's yeah. got to be super <laughs> agile for that to not tear your ligaments up. Completely nobody, his body. Nobody works harder than David Johnson. Really, I, mean, I repeat, nobody works harder than David Johnson. I mean, you know, Fitz is that kind of guy too. He works, you know, unbelievable. You know, you just see the time and, and energy they put into being great. It ain't an overnight thing, you know. And, right. you know, I, I saw Mark all off season and then even during the season. I mean, he's lifting the D lineman work plan and making it look easy. Lifting, you know, more weights than I'm lifting. And you know, I'm kind of upset. I'm like, man, oh, I'm <laughs> the game up, man. The running back, man. But, you know, and, but that, that carries over those situations where your body, everything around is strong. So it allows your muscles to, you know, to, to be strong and your tendons to be strong, man. So it's a true blessing, though, man, because, you know, meniscus four to six weeks, you know, you'd be ready for time. OTA start up. But if it was an ACL, he would have been out the whole, all next year. So it's yeah, a true yeah. blessing. That's true. That is a blessing. Good for him. So, you know what? One thing that I think is a trip is uh, you guys seem to have the Seattle Seahawks number, dog. Like, the, that's that's the <laughs> realest thing in the world. It, you know, I, I saw some stat they put up the other day, something crazy. Like, they've lost, I think, seven times at uh, up there at, at – it's not Safeco. Safeco is the baseball stadium. What's the name of this stadium? Whatever it is, uh, in Century Seattle. Link, Century Link, Century Link, Century Link. Century Link. There yeah. it is. They change all the corporate sponsorships. Uh, and, and you guys have beat since Russell Wilson has been the quarterback, and you guys are account for two or three of those. What three. is it? It's three. <laughs> it's three. It's definitely three. I know for a fact because them things are special every time we get them. <laughs> <laughs> and low key should have been four. Should have been yeah. four. You guys could have had them in, in Arizona right. this year. With that tie game. But what is it? Tell me, what is it? Why is it that you guys just got their number and they're like a puzzle to the rest of the league? You know, I mean, they're, they're a good team. Man. They do so many things well. They have so much talent. I think really what it is is it's a division, division game, man. Anytime you play a division game, I mean, you know the opponent well. We, we study them over and over again. We, you know, we prepare for what they do during the offseason because we know we're going to see them twice. Mm. You know, but it's bigger than that. It's really the, the mentality, man. So those division games, you know it's going to be a fight. It's not really a football game. It's a true out battle. You know, we're going out there and we're trying to be the most physical team. And I feel like, you know, the, you know when you play against other teams, it's more about scheme. You know, it's trying mm. to figure out, you know, what to do and how to do it to beat them. You know, it's, it's all scheme. But when you play those division games, it becomes just a, a true a true fight. You know, you're out there just who's more physical. You know what I mean? There's no scheme of all. It's and really just who's going to be more physical. That's that's one thing I noticed because you know what? Seattle and the Legion of Boom and whatnot, they have the ability to punk teams. And I've watched they them do. punk teams over the last three or four seasons, and they don't never punk y'all. Right, so there's a Mike Tyson effect. It really is. <laughs> like, they yeah, beat teams right. before the game even starts, and you guys are never intimidated by them. Like, it's always you guys go in there with the intent of punching them in the mouth. and First. Work, first. Yeah, that's right, first. Yeah. Another thing y'all do that I think is super impressive is you guys figure out how to stop Russell Wilson. And that's on no. you. That's the, this is on the defense. That's right. on y'all. Which is almost impossible. Uh, he's yeah, shown it's right. almost impossible. Yeah, yeah. He, he's special. That guy's very special. Got a lot of respect for that guy, man. Every time we compete against him, I know I'm going to get a grade A game. So, you know, it makes me bring my grade A, you know. So, i never you know. seen you not bring the grade A, brother. right? And then I tell you what else, <laughs> speaking of respect, we talked about it here on the Ozone. A lot of respect for you because you know what? Man, that was great the way that you handled when you rolled on Tannehill's knee. Uh, when you rolled on his leg, that was great because you know what? It's a lot of dudes. I feel like in the NFL, there's a lot of fake gangsters in the NFL and everybody wants to act extra tough. And, you know, it, it seems to be real popular to be a tough guy in the media. It's a, right. It's to me, it's one step away from being a studio gangster as a rapper. 
Um, <laughs> you know, but you guys are out there risking your lives, and I and listen, I understand how real that is. I don't think you ever want to hurt somebody else, you know, and especially knowing what's at stake with people feeding their families and whatnot. Right. And when when you when that happened, unfortunately, you just being a bigger man and saying, "Hey, man, I didn't mean to do that. I I don't want him to get hurt." That's great because a lot, I don't think a lot of people have the class to do that. Right. And I also think that honestly. I think that it has to do with your size. I don't think people understand how big of a dude you are. <laughs> For everybody who's out there listening, I stand next to Calais, and he's one of the people that makes me stand up straight. And that's not <laughs> it's, it's not a lot of jokers out there that's like that because I'm about 6'6", 300, and that dude is towers over me. And uh, and and I, I just, I really, I would love to hear a little quick take for you talking about the culture in the league now with with that sort of thing and why some guys go one way uh, is it bravado? Is it an intimidation factor for the game? And why other guys take the high road? I mean, it's only a handful of guys that I can count that actually I would say, wow, that guy, that was a classy play. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I really feel like um, the game is meant to play a certain kind of way. You know, you learn it. I, I've been playing football since I was six years old. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a sportsmanship to it. It's a competitiveness to it, though, where, you know, you respect your opponent, but you want to you 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 beat them down as, as hard as you can. But in in a in a fair way, you know, and you know the injuries is the one bad part of the game. You know, I mean, if there's anything bad about the game in its in its purest form, you know, even on the lowest level is just injuries. Right. You know, and you never want to see a guy go down because you know how hard you have to work to get to get to this level. You know, and I feel like most of the guys, you know, that are playing this day and age, you know, I mean, they're they get in love, fall in love with the uh, the flair of it. You know, the touchdowns being scored and the dancing, and which is cool. That's a big part of the game too. You know, I mean that's that's huge, but you know, the the game at its core, it's about the, the you know the respect you have to you have to go to you know uh, when you when you watch your opponent, and you know the, the, and understanding what he's trying to do to me, but you know and, and what I gotta do to to stop him, and you know and the game is really it's a chess match, you know it's a competition that uh, that is is more mental and physical, the combination of two, and you get to work with the guys next to you, so you you, you learn to appreciate the the, the next man, and uh, in this game. You know, I mean, a lot of people come before us, and a lot of people have done it, you know, a lot of different ways. But you know, the people who've done it the best have always appreciated the next man. It's real, and it's that's, real. Including, that's including the opponent, man. It's, it's real yeah. talk. I had a, you know, I've had that experience working on the show Ballers with Larry Zonka, and I do scenes with him, and I get to sit and talk with him a lot about the game, and you know how the game has evolved, and the way that they played it, and all the different stuff. He says a lot of that same sort of, that same sort of. Uh, uh, I would say heritage, if you will, is the word that pops in mind of doing things the right way. I think, truthfully, I think when you play games the right way, I was just having this conversation yesterday. When you play the game the right way, I don't care if you're talking about baseball, basketball, football, there's a rhythm to the game. Right. And, yeah. and like if, if we go out and play basketball with somebody who's on a lower level, chances are somebody's going to get hurt. Right. Like you need yeah. to play with other guys on your level because there's a rhythm to things you're supposed to do and things you're not supposed to do. And when guys play out of that rhythm, either by choice or by accident or by ignorance, that's when thing you know things go ugly. Right. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Calais, this is Terry. I want to ask you a question. How long? How long does it take you to heal after the season? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It takes it takes a good little bit, man. It seems like every year it just takes a little bit longer. Really? You know, but. I mean, I matured so much, you know, since my younger years of being in the league. So, you know, as soon as the season's over, all I do is rehab. You know, I don't go mm. and just relax. I rehab for a while to try to get my body to come back a little quicker. You know, and that way I stay in a little bit of shape, too. So when I start re working out again, I ain't just, you know, fattening out of shape. When I was younger, man, I could just go on vacation, kick back, relax, man, and uh, not do nothing for a while and then come back and, and start back from brand new. But, you know, being 30 years old now, man, it's just, you know, I mean, I'm still a young man. You know, in the game, but you know, you just you, you learn to appreciate, you know, every moment and and that's taking care of your body. It should start right away. You know, I try I try to encourage all the young dudes, man. If something's hurting, it ain't gonna just go away. You know, you can't just you stop for a second. As soon as you start back working out again, that thing's gonna pop up on you if you don't fix it. So take care of your body, man. So wow. it does take me it takes me a good little bit though, you know. But I I, I should be good in about a month. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so when you say rehab, what is it that you have to do for rehab? You know, uh, so, I mean, it depends on what's hurting and stuff like that, but I continue to stretch those areas around it. You know, the stuff that I would be doing to play in the game, say, like, you know, if we were playing this week, you know, we made it to the playoffs, the same stuff I would do to be able to play, 
mm-hmm. you know, as far as just the rehab goes, like the you know the the, the soft tissue stuff, the massaging, mm. uh, you know, the, the small muscle groups around the work in those areas. I would do all that stuff, you know, but just you know, I mean, just to, as as precaution so that I can fix it, you know, when it's when the time comes. But most time, I mean, I my body feels pretty good right now, so I'm gonna just do be you know yoga and uh, and man, stretching. Man, yoga is a monster. People yeah, don't even man. understand. I wish I'd have discovered it when I was younger. I just started doing that Kundalini yoga because our moms lost like 70 pounds uh, and yoga was a big component of it. And man, that yoga, it has changed. I didn't realize how stiff I was until I started doing <laughs> yoga. And you see dudes in there all twisted up, pretzeled out, looking like, oh, you're, not. Well, you're like, yo, man, what is wrong? With, how do you do that? How? Right? How? <laughs> how do you do this? This is more impressive than putting up 450 on a bench. Like, what are you doing? It's unbelievable. They get your muscles shaking and everything. You feel like a little kid. Man. Yeah, man, well, I we ain't gonna hold you for long, man. I just got a couple more questions. I'm gonna let you go. Um, I gotta jam you up a little bit, and it, it's it's two pieces. The first piece is a lot of coaches getting fired. Uh, you actually introduced me to Coach Arians, and he was a really cool dude, and you spoke really highly of him. Um, and a lot of a lot of coaches are getting fired. One thing we're gonna talk about on the segment, even after we get off with you, is. Why is it that the coaches get the golden parachute in the NFL and if you got cut tomorrow, you just cut and you asked out? What what does that do as a player? Chip Kelly just got cut. He's about to get breaded. He's getting breaded. Like shrimp. Breaded, fried. Throw him in the grease. Same thing. <laughs> same same goes for Jeff Fisher. Cake yeah. up. I'm we talking to yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cake by the ocean. <laughs> it's cake by the ocean out there. You chilling. And then, and the fellas out there playing, you don't have that same latitude. They don't have that same. What what can the NFL do? You know what can they do to just make things more a fair, a fair playing field? <laughs> you know, I really don't know, man. That's one thing we do need to do is figure out how to get more guarantees and contracts because the game, you know, is just one injury here, one one thing there, and you know, and everything's done. You know, I mean, this is you know the medicine is good, so it's a lot harder for you to have a career in the injury. But even then, you know, I mean, the injury can can make you a lesser player, and a lesser player, right. you know, leaves you, you know, with no money in your pocket because yeah, they don't have nobody to get the job done. Yep. So, you know, it, it's tough, man. It, it is a catch twenty two because you do have sixteen hundred players, you know, that you know that all are going to come through at one point in time, go through some kind of injury, and you know, when guys get hurt, you have to replace them with somebody different, and you got to pay that new guy. So it's kind of tough, but you know, in coaching, there's only thirty two coaches, so it's easier to pay those guys. But it's just the way it's always been, so I don't get upset about it, you know. I um, mean, in the end, I'm never mad about anybody getting money. So, okay, oh, no, I'm not mad at Chip Kelly, no chance, or Jeff Fisher. I'm not mad at neither one of them. I just, I, I just, it blows my mind, and I think that the NBA really, and I'm, you know, I was a, a baseball player before I got into the movies and whatnot. But uh, man, the NBA seems like they got it figured out with their the way that their CBA works because they're like it's like revenue share. Yeah, obviously they got a lot of less guys than than the other major sports, but still it's it's pretty impressive. Um, but uh, last last couple things. Uh, one, from what I understand, you going into free agency. I'm assuming that I, I think they'd be crazy to not try to bring you back. But it's got to be tempting to step into the market because you, even though you talk about yourself like your old man River, right? Everybody who watches the game knows. <laughs> <laughs> we all know the impact you have, man. You just you're a humble dude, and that's just because you're a good guy and you were well raised. But everybody knows you step on that field with ninety three, you have a problem on your hand. Problem. And uh, and so so if you could just give us a bit, I know you, you ain't got to show your hand or nothing like that, but just give us a bit about the free agency. And then the final piece is. Who do you like, and who do you like going into the playoffs? Since unfortunately y'all didn't make it, who do you like, and, <laughs> and who? <laughs> I know you don't want to answer it, but uh, but who do you like, man? Because that you know it's it's a it's competition out there. This go around. Oh yeah, now, it's gonna be interesting. You know, to answer your first question, man. Um, you know, I mean, when it comes to that the, to the contract situation, and all that, man. You know, I really I really love Arizona. Man. I really love to come back to Arizona, but you know, in the end, you know, uh, just being in the situation the way it is, you have to go to the market and, and, and test the value, you know, because that's just your market values and tell you what you're worth and stuff like that, you know. As you I should. work very hard. This is my business, man, so I'm, I'm excited for uh, the opportunity. You know, I did, I, did, I did my part. I played the game like I always play the game, you know, left all out there. You know, now, you know, my agent will figure things out. Hopefully it will be with the Cardinals, but, you know, in the end, it's business. I understand how it goes. Um, and to ask you a second question, Man, uh, you know, it's a lot of good teams out there, man. It's hard to go against the Patriots. Those guys seem to always be in it. I really was a fan of the Raiders before. Oh, uh, me too. Don't bring it up. Don't bring it up. 
They weren't going anywhere, Calais. Don't waste your time. Man, don't listen to this fool. <laughs> don't Calais. waste your time. My brother, <laughs> no, no. he's been hating on he's been hating on them since Day one. Since Jesus got crucified, man. And and <laughs> I tell you since what they played around with Marcus is Allen. that is that they they had it this year, man. They had a good chance of making some noise this year. That's all they would have done. And that man. Anyways, sorry, I'm gonna let you continue. It was a soft <laughs> no, sore yeah. spot for your boy, man. Yeah, you know, but uh one team I would be scared of if I was in the AFC is the Steelers. I feel like Mm. they have the ability to beat anybody, especially the Patriots. That's one team from the Patriots. I don't want to see anybody else. You know, the Patriots look to handle pretty easy. Uh, The Chiefs look good right now, but I just, you know, for some reason, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I just don't, I don't see them winning. (laughs) Calais, Calais, you guys been talking. We ain't been talking. talking. This is all legit. (laughs) Now, if if, if, if you heard the last few weeks, he's been so high on the Chiefs. T is high on the Chiefs and the Falcons. And I told him two things. One, Andy Reid finds a way to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. He's going to find a way to lose. I understand that you in the league, you didn't got a cosign or nothing else, yeah, but Andy, Andy Reid Andy Reed somehow or another finds a way to lose. The team is sick. They got The squad is incredible. But for some reason, I believe that he will find a way to loon, lose, and I believe that Matt Ryan has showed that he finds ways to lose. But that, that kid's getting it done now. He's a kid. I'll, He's a kid. I'll tell you like this. I think Atlanta has a better uh, – has a, a real chance to win it now. I do think Atlanta has a real chance. Wow. They're for running game, and they can throw the ball. Yeah. And, so, and when you got a balanced attack, man, you know, that's, that's really huge because they have the two-handed monster, and those backs test the ball well at the backfield, so you have to account for that. Yep. I'm playing against them this year. I, I really have a lot of respect for them. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Well, hey, man, happy new year. Thanks for joining us. You are our first guest on the Ozone, and I'm happy about it. Yeah. I'm just, uh, man, God bless. I'm happy that you, you, you're safe, that you're heading into this year. And I'm telling you, you're going to get your cheese, man. Any, any NFL teams that are smart, they know what time it is. They, no. <laughs> your weight is already up, and they, they're going to pay you accordingly. And, uh, yeah, man, happy new year. Good luck healing up. And when you come out a little further west, hit your boy, man. Come on, set of ballers. You know you got to come yes, through. Yeah. Yes, sir, man. Thanks for, thanks for having me, man. I love to, love to come through, man. Always a pleasure. All, yeah, no yeah. doubt. Tell the family, hey. Will do. All right, brother. Peace. Peace. Whew, ladies and gentlemen. Falcons real. I told mean, you. I, listen, <laughs> I'm listen, sorry. The ozone is real. <laughs> the ozone is real. The ozone is real. You know what else is real? What is it? The 5 4 Club. That's ladies real. and gentlemen, it has not changed. It has only gotten stronger. Join the movement. 54club.com. For only $65 a month, you will get a box of clothes every month that's worth more than $150. I mean, fellas, this is the easiest thing in the world. You don't have to shop. The clothes are coming to you. They're going to be tailored for you, and they are going to be season-focused. So when it gets hot, guess what? You're getting shorts. Uh, Life is good at the 5-4 Club. Use promo code OMAR, O-M-A-R, for those of you who may like to spell it Umar. But uh, go in there, use promo code OMAR, get a couple dollars off of your first couple months shipment, and enjoy your new style. 5-4 Club. Join the vibe. They have shoes now. The shoes are awesome. The shoes are bananas. Uh, but yeah, man, this is this is great. That was that was a, a great call from Calais. A it lot was. of insight. Right. A lot of insight on what... what not a believer in them Chiefs, though. <laughs> I listen, don't know, Calais. Listen, you, what, that, you talk about a guy who believed in the Rangers, though, so... <laughs> he's actually, he ain't talking so tough. Now he's off the phone. You talking tough? Yeah. Where's Glenn? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he doing what I was just playing. <laughs> exactly. Break your spine, dude. <laughs> Speaking of breaking spine, man, what about I, – I just want to speak on this thing. I mean, Calais talked about it for a little bit. What about these injuries in the NFL, man? It's real, man. That league is serious business. You'll mess around in the NFL and ruin your life. You'll mess around in the NFL and ruin your life yeah. at a young age. Yeah. And it's just a really tough proposition. What are you going to do when Hulkamania runs wild on you, brother? You end up on that stretcher. Come on, man. Yeah, every single week. Let's look – let's go – let's speak on the injury report – uh, in the NFL, just l- seriously, just just look at it. Look at this injury report, and we're not talking about hurt egos, folk. We are we are talking about the NFL and the guys who get busted up. So you know, uh, it, it, you know, we saw the thing with David Johnson. His knee got twisted, his leg planted, and his body got contorted, and somehow or another, he didn't get. Now, I don't even know how a he tear. Did. He didn't get a tear. It's unbelievable. I Just mean, strain, he tore his right? meniscus. He tore he his meniscus. I thought he, he strained it. No, no, he strained his MCL. So they they said he they said he sprained his MCL and he has a possible tear on the meniscus, and that's why he's got to get the surgery for that to heal that up. I do believe. Um, then you got Quentin Rollins, uh, uh, who who had to get carted off yesterday. I saw that live. It was sick. 
It's frightening. It, it didn't even seem like anything major, but they're playing on that turf. This is why this game is so dangerous. He rolled over, flipped, hit his head, and then got rolled out in the cart. Well, the coach said that he came home early today. Everything's progressing in a positive manner. Um, you know, you got uh, Lamar Miller from the Texans is, is expected to come back. You have, uh, man, you got your man on the Bills. Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, who needs, needs to get another, foot, another surgery. foot surgery. I mean, this game is so hard on your body. Blake Bortles said he played with two separated shoulders this year. And, and that tendonitis. Would, yes, and that would explain the, his play. Sure would. Sure would. Uh, Forte got knee surgery. He's supposed to be back. Man, you got uh, Demarius Randall on Green Bay. He hurt his knee. Yeah. Uh, it, you got it, – it's just – it doesn't stop. And at what point – you know, you have to really love. You got. I mean, even the coaches are getting hurt. Look at Gary Kubiak. Gary Kubiak just retired. Young man, he just retired, and 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 he. Arian said, had a problem as well, right? Yeah, guys are guys are <laughs> that Aryan nation. Aryans. This time is the way you want to use the S. Oh, okay. it's Aryans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so, you know, it just it 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 leads you to to ask the question: Would you want to be involved in the NFL? And would you want your children to be involved in football as a sport? At what cost? You know? At what cost? Because I mean, I'm a, I'm one of those people that believes that you're always, you know, you, you nothing is guaranteed. You're always at a risk in right. life. Um, and but I believe you really do have to love that game to want to be involved on that level. Spencer wear ribs. Oh my my goodness! You know, Jordan Reed has that serious shoulder injury. Yeah, there's a lot of serious shoulder injuries, and you wouldn't think that a shoulder injury would stop someone from being able to play, but those are serious shoulder injuries. AC joints. Come on, man. That's crucial. This is when, and this is this is why, for those who didn't know, this is why I just kept saying, God bless Calais for, you know, thank yeah. God he's, he's he's healthy, he's okay, he's feeling good. It's a big deal in the NFL to come out, like he just said, he's feeling pretty good today. For the season to be over and for you to be feeling pretty good, that's a, that's a win. That's a blessing in and of itself. It is. Because it can, it, it just, it can go the wrong way. Um, but back to touching on these coaches, I mean, look at this situation. Chip Kelly's going to get $40 million. He just got fired. They're, I think they're firing the cleaning house again when they fired Jim Harbaugh, and they shouldn't have. And they should have never picked up Chip Kelly. What was the difference when he left Philadelphia and come out here? He stunk, stunk the joint up. He it's, did. Man, put on your gas masks. It's, it's <laughs> human. <laughs> Pepe Le Pew. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oui, come oui. here, my chérie. <laughs> oh, oh, you are the poop and poop. Oh, oui. oh ça sent mal, huh? <laughs> Yeah, man. It's but a, you know the downside about that is that somebody will probably go pick him up what, again. That's what I wanted to speak on. Is that it's that it same with Jeff Fisher. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. There's this there's this, you know, you get this circle jerk of coaches who have the golden parachute. It's it is like uh, it's like a microcosm of America in a lot of senses. It's bailing out Wall Street instead of Main Street. It's the it's, exactly. it's the idea that the people who cause the problem get bailed out and and actually can cry on a, a pillow of of uh, money a pillow of hundreds and fifties as opposed to the people who actually let me tell you something if you pay for a bad coach if you're a, a player playing for a bad coach the likelihood of you being injured is so much higher and also because the coach is not preparing you and also the likelihood of you actually maximizing your earning potential is really lower right because you're not good. You can't be as good. The team isn't as good. And everybody wants to pay a winner, unless you're a coach. Well, he must have naked pictures of somebody. Because Well, but this, <laughs> this is where it doesn't work is because the he the is, uh, the, well, the, the, you know, <laughs> nowadays, maybe he's on the snap. Maybe they dissolve. <laughs> yeah. but, but nowadays, everybody gets the same thing is what I'm saying. It, you, don't, you don't have to be proven as a winner to get this job again. Which is unfortunate. I mean, it's supposed to be about winning. It's yeah. unfortunate Period. for the sport itself. Yes. It's unbelievable. It, it's unfortunate just to watch these guys keep getting recycled, you know, and it's sick because let the fresh blood in there. You got a guy like Hugh Jackson. He got a squad that doesn't have any talent, and he's building it back, and they were insinuating sort of that his job was in jeopardy, but then they told him that they're going to bring him back. I don't even think that it should be in question that Hugh no. Jackson should come back. No Why doubt about that it. Why should that be in question? Hugh Jackson shouldn't have lost his job up in Oakland. I can tell you that exactly. as a Raiders fan. 
that Raider squad was real, and they had some key injuries, and that there's nothing anybody really can do about that per se. Exactly. Uh, the the way that those guys, the way that McFadden got hurt, and those guys got hurt, and the quarterback got hurt, and then he tried to he pulled every string he could and went and got Carson Palmer because he was a Bengals coach before. He went and got Carson Palmer out, out of retirement to try to make some noise, and then he still loses his job. It just wasn't right. And he goes to a place like Cleveland, the nowhere nowhere land, and is trying to change a whole organization around. Hopefully it works out for him. He's trying to change the culture, which is very difficult to do. Uh, yeah, this is tough stuff. But now tell me this. Now you're looking at the – let's let's look at the games. You got the games pulled up, the playoff games this weekend, the NFL playoff games? Let's pull them up. Shouldn't be too difficult. And I just want to get your call on who, who and how you feel. Let's go game by game. Okay, you want to go Seattle Let's over go. Detroit? Oh, 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 matter of fact, you know what? We got another caller. Trucker Dave wants to wants to wants to to, to call in and I'm talk sure about the game. Does. Let's see what Trucker Dave has to say. Hey, good afternoon, big old. What's going on, Trucker Dave? Oh, we're live in the ozone. We're kicking off a an action packed, progressive year of sports podcasting here, and we are so happy that you are a part of it. It's epic. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's a brand new spanking year. Brand new year. And we just got some great insight from uh, all-pro defensive tackle Calais Campbell. I think you're going to be interested to hear what he had to say about a lot of teams. Mm -hmm. And he actually said that he he liked the Patriots. Uh, He liked the Patriots in the AFC. He said it's going to be tough to vote against Tommy. But at the same time, he said he thinks they should watch out for the Steelers. We're about to go over our playoff review and wanted to get your input game by game on what you think. I'm going to start. I'm looking at the, the board now. We're going to start out, unfortunately, I don't even like to speak about it anymore, <laughs> but uh, the, the Raiders who dropped down to the five seed at the Houston Texans. Wait, 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 I mean, I got my take on it. How do you feel like this one's going to go, guys? I'm taking Houston, obviously. Well, Houston has the best defense in football. Yeah, I was going to say that. Houston, even though Brock Osweiler is a casualty of the team, they do have an outstanding defense, and I look for Houston to move on to New England. Um, and uh, what we gonna and get, get blown out? And get blown out and get blown and out. Get crazy zooted. <laughs> well, there, there's that. I can't even disagree. Unfortunately, I uh, I wasn't impressed with what I saw from not just from McGloin yesterday. I wasn't impressed with what I saw from the Raiders at large. Truthfully, the, the part of the team that looked like they were still game was the uh, receiving core, to be honest. Right. Because Crab got open a lot. Amari Cooper got open a lot. McGloin couldn't find him. And we saw all season, we saw Derek Carr bail out the defense right. with his superlative play in the clutch. And uh, now we don't have that. So I- I'm with you. I'm going to go with the Texans over the Raiders. No miracle happening there. Now let's move on to a game that I think is actually going to be interesting. Is the uh, the Miami Dolphins going up to Pittsburgh and playing the Steelers. I don't really think it's going to be anywhere close because Pittsburgh, <laughs> Miami can't stop the run. They have Le'Veon Bell, which is either the number one or number two running back in football. So they're going to just stuff him down their throat, which is going to leave Antonio Brown wide open and all the other pieces. And they have Jay Ajay, but you need more in the running game. And it's going to be cold. What yeah. do you think about that, Trucker Dave? Well, what I think about that is that Miami, you know, you have to look at teams with Miami and the Raiders and, Look at them on the road, and on the road, I just don't see like where they step up and go to the next level and be the team, you know, like Pittsburgh on the road. You know, after Pittsburgh beats them, I'd like to talk about that Pittsburgh Kansas City game. <laughs> ah, <laughs> right? Then there's that. Well, then let's uh, let's look at this. Let's keep going down the road. Detroit Lions at the Seahawks. I, I really think that I think that it's terrible that the Seahawks played themselves down into the three hole. To be honest. And not really because do. they can't beat the Lions. I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna smack the Lions around, especially given the way that the Lions lost last night. Um, but right. I, I do believe that these you can't play extra games in the NFL. It's just the odds are against you when you play extra games. I think that Stafford could beat them actually, and one of the reasons why is watching Seattle play last night. They look terrible. I mean, you can't have a problem against the Forty ers They had a problem against the Forty ers Did <laughs> the Forty ers are terrible. They're a bad organization. <laughs> yes. So you think Matt Stafford goes in despite yeah. be st- despite the the loss that he suffered, despite the the way that they lost against Green Bay. That's interesting. They can actually beat them. I don't think that they are, but they actually have the potential to beat them. It's, it, that's that's a toss up. That game is actually a toss up because it's going to come down directly to Russell Wilson. He's going to have to take control of the game. He's going to have to because Thomas Rawls is not panning out as a running back, and and Detroit's found that kid Zinner who seems to bring brought life back to the running game. Mm. 
All right. Yeah, but you know what you got to look at with, with Detroit, uh, what I don't like about Detroit is I'm watching the Detroit Green Bay game, and there's always a point in the game where you're saying, okay, where are the Lions going to self-destruct? Oh, bam, they did it the week before. They did it last night. You got home field, and you got a chance to win the game on your home field, and there you go, you self-destruct. Anything you can do not to get to the next level. So my money's not on the Detroit Lions. But what it is, it's because, you know, I'm impressed more with Russell Wilson because he's playing really without a running game and an offensive line. But if this were Andrew Luck, he would be getting so much credit for having his team in the playoffs. This is true. This is true. Especially with a beat-up defense. Yeah. So, you know, you got to look at a couple of different factors. So I like Seattle moving on. So Seattle is what seed is Seattle? Five. Seattle's five, so Seattle's going to move on to Atlanta. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. So I, I go back to experience. You know, Russell Russell Wilson's experience. Atlanta's red hot. Everybody's I'm not betting against about Seattle. Matt Ryan for MVP. Huh? I'm not betting against Seattle. I'm going. I, I, we're 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 in a we're in a obviously this is this is the uh, an early it's a premature conversation because the game's got to be played this weekend and unfortunately a bunch right. of guys got to get hurt this weekend in all the games <laughs> so we really don't even know who's gonna be you know on the thing but I tell you what when in Russell Wilson's first season Pete Carroll mismanaged the game in the playoffs against Seattle did, I mean man. against the Falcons yeah. that Seattle should have won yeah. and a lot of those guys are still on the team and I think that. If I had to put my money on it, Seattle in general is a lot more clutch than than Atlanta is. Now, obviously, that Atlanta team didn't have the monster known as Julio Jones. And or Devonta it, Freeman. Or Devonta Freeman. Or Tevin Coleman. Uh, and that, yeah, 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 yeah. But but I I would save my dough and bet a, a, a better, I think, a better matchup. And that better matchup might be the game that's taking place this Sunday, which is the New York Giants versus the Green Bay Packers. Because, as usual, yeah. everybody loves the Packers, and Eli Manning in the clutch is somebody you don't want to go against. Yeah, he's better than Peyton Manning. <laughs> I, would so take, true. I would take but Eli. This is a different Eli team. where he, his, his running game is questionable, but his secondary is so great. So, so what I was going to tell you. Yeah. You know, they are in since week six, they are the number one defense in football. Since week six. They are literally right. – that team does not allow – uh, they, ain't, they ain't giving up the booty. Put it like that. And Green Bay gives up the no. booty. Green Bay gives up the booty. Yesterday, matter of fact, yesterday they probably should have lost that game against the Redskins yesterday. And and the defense stepped up yesterday. Well, there you go in lies the question again and everybody's saying, should you franchise tag Kirk Cousins? Should you not? Is he a franchise quarterback? Is he not? He made a big mistake again. A big mistake. And, yeah. you know, that was a like, big wow, mistake. dude. But, but, but he also mistake. got let down because even though he made, he made one big mistake, which was that pick that was across the middle. But he threw a pick that wasn't his yeah. fault because his receiver fell down as well. So I can't put it all yeah. on Kirk Cousins. Me, myself, I like Kirk Cousins. I can't even front. Right. I like, I like the fact that he has a passion for the game. And I'll tell you what else. I when, like him too. When he messes up. And when it's when it goes the wrong way, Kirk Cousins is upset. He's not like a lot of these guys who act like it's no big yeah. deal. And he'll wear it. And he'll wear it. But you know what's changed in the NFL is the fact that guys used to have a clipboard and they had like four years. And then on that four years they got a learning curve. But what you what ended up happening is you had a guy like Peyton Manning who came out his first year in like nineteen ninety eight. He threw twenty six touchdowns and twenty eight interceptions but people saw that he could handle it. And then you get an Andrew Luck, and then you get a Cam Newton who throws for 4,000 yards on his first year, and then you get Dak Prescott. So everybody's judging the rookies and saying, hey, you don't need the clipboard anymore because the coach's job is at, you know, is at stake if these guys don't do good anymore. And it's really affecting the NFL now. So you don't even have that chance to grow as a quarterback like you used to. That's what's changed. And the bad part is, is that those guys are once in a generation guys. All those guys are like not right. once in a generation, exactly. but they're they're once they're, they're very rare, very very once in a draft at the very most. I mean, a guy like Peyton Manning comes around literally once in a generation, right. and these other guys who can do it. The majority of guys get out there and they don't know what they're doing. But Peyton Manning comes from a line of <laughs> successful quarterbacks. Like literally, football. he's he's, he's right. a football guy that's been doing this his entire life. So, I think you bring up a good point. I totally agree with you. Who do you like, Trucker Dave? Who do you like in the playoffs overall? I think we know the answer on the AFC side, but who do you like 
uh, and why? What's the Super Bowl matchup? Well, you know what? It's kind of premature right now. I think you've got to go game by game. If you mm. go game by game and just based on what I saw, I'm looking at the Raiders. Uh, if the Raiders were full strength, of course, I like the Raiders over Houston, even though Houston has a better defense. But I think that's a game that Carr could win, even though he disappointed me in those two Kansas City games. And some of these games on the road, you have to win those games on the road if you're going to be a Super Bowl team. So getting back to that, I like um, I like Texas to go up to New England if Miami um, doesn't win against Pittsburgh. So I like Texas to go against New England there. And then I like um, that Kansas City-Pittsburgh game is really interesting to me because if, if the Chiefs get Allen Houston back, that's huge. Um, I don't know. I really like Kansas City. I mean, if anybody had a chance, you know, with, uh, with Hill, I mean, if anybody had a chance to come out of the AFC, you got to be solid on defense if you're going to go up to New England and win. Yeah. You have to be, have some leaders on defense. So if you can get a couple of stops and force a turnover, but what I saw from New England yesterday is it's kind of hard to game plan against what they're doing because they keep switching up the game plan and they have the pieces to switch it up and they're playing situational on defense and doing enough on defense to where if you give Tom Brady one turnover, it's a problem. So obviously, and I he's think, not turning um, the ball over. But somebody brought up a great no, point I was watching today, at which was if you look at the. Uh, if you look at the Patriots' schedule, the Patriots, the best quarterback the Patriots have beat is Joe Flacco. Right. It, they, they, oh, no, Joe Flacco's not a chump. Everybody he's thinks he's not a he chump. Is. He's not Joe, a chump. Joe but Flacco's that team, a real deal. that team was. He, he blew out their defense, though. Their defense yeah. at that time was number one. Yeah. And 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 so what I'm saying is, is I think that when they go against, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, the bye is crucial in football, in my opinion. And when they go against the Primo Taglia beef, I think we're going to see some fireworks. Maybe not in the divisional round, you know, but in the in on championship Saturday or championship Sunday in about was that three weeks from now, two three weeks from now. Mm-hmm. That's when we're going to really right. get to test the New England Patriots. That's what I really believe. Right. I think it's more interesting to talk about is who's coming out of the NFC, man. Because if you look at a team like Dallas, you got to beat a couple of Hall of Fame uh, quarterbacks and coaches just basically to get to the show. I mean, AFC is not that hard. I mean, it's hard, but. I mean, but looking at what you got to – Aaron Rodgers is hot right now. And everybody knows the hot Aaron Rodgers is dangerous. Very Matt dangerous. Ryan is hot right now. Matt Ryan is dangerous. <laughs> Matt Ryan's been hot uh, all season. <laughs> but to go into Dallas the way if they can – and you know what, I'm not impressed by Dallas. To be honest with you, everybody going to listen to this and say, wow, I'm surprised. But, you know, pulling what Jerry Jones did with Dak Prescott and, you know, bringing Tony Romo in, that to me shows that you're not sold on winning. What are you guys doing down there? I mean, you have your quarterback, but you can't let the old one go. I agree. I actually, the only thing that I didn't have a problem with Dak not playing, I had, I didn't have a problem with Dak getting out of the game only because the way that people get hurt in football, (laughs) it's better for me. Let Tony Romo get in there and get smashed up, or what really happens, then you really, I mean, Tony Romo only played one one set, and then Mark Sanchez went in there and gave you to Mark Sanchez (laughs) and got beat up. Have a number two, please. Yeah, I'll I'll take a 14-yard loss on 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 a third down. Uh, and end up at the two yard line. He gave you this, the Mark Sanchez. Yeah. But I agree with what you're yeah, saying. What is the Mark Sanchez? It, you know, not mediocre. Being prepared, going in there, throwing two interceptions. He didn't do anything in New York. It's like, okay, man, what is he really all about? He got oh, paid. He got, he got paid. He got paid, is what he was about. He was an all world dude at USC because he had a, a superior coach. Uh, he came out, he got major paid. He didn't ever really make any noise with the Jets. And you know right. he's a cool dude. Uh, he, he's he's somewhat arrogant, but a cool dude. And then uh, and I think that's what he's about. And he has the name value, which they gave him by paying him fifty million dollars when he came out when he came out of right. the draft. And he's got that name value that now you know I can tell you this much: you ain't gonna win any NFL games with Mark Sanchez behind the center. No. I can tell you that. But Trucker Dave, right. always good to hear from you, man. Thanks for calling in. Thanks for your predictions. And uh, I'll catch you sooner than later. Thanks for being on the first edition of the Ozone in 2017. Be safe. Great for having me. Thank you, guys. Those predictions are real nowadays. Yeah, man. He's looking towards the next week. (laughs) We already canceled out a couple of teams. (laughs) A couple of teams already ready to go. Yeah, Miami's not real. They can't win without Ryan Tannehill, I don't believe. Yeah, I don't think so either. I I think that there's a – I think that there's some, you know – 
And Kansas City has a Pro Bowl team on defense. Kansas City is real. <laughs> Kansas I'm not. City. I'm not fronting know, that Kansas City isn't real. You're like Clay. I just. I just don't like uh, right. the management. I just don't like the management. And maybe he's changed. People change. But to my track record, to, to my history, in my memory, and watching the football in my lifetime, Andy Reid finds a way to lose. I agree. And it's just. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I don't want to do it. I don't want to believe it. But it's. Uh, you know. It is. It is what it is. Tell you, man, watch out for those Falcons. Falcons are real. As long as they don't have to play in the cold, I think they're going to be good. Yeah. You know what else is good? What? Gorilla Life. The chlorophyll drink that is raw, a green tonic made with chlorophyll from concentrated alfalfa. Gorilla Life, it's life in a bottle. It's absolutely delicious. If you guys listened at the end of last year, you heard I had a cold. I got a hold of Gorilla Life. Bam. Knocked it right out. And uh, this is life in a bottle, folks. It'll make you feel better. It'll clean out your blood. It'll help your organs. You're in a new year. It's all about the resolutions of health and prosperity. Your body is your temple and let your body prosper via Gorilla Life. Go to GorillaLife.com and you will find where to get it at your local health food store. Moving on. How about Ronda Rousey? Poor girl. That's what she's not. She's not poor. <laughs> She's she is mega paid, and she now the question is 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 she mega paid as a product of the media or is she mega paid uh, because she actually she earned that new puppy and then she just happened to meet her match a couple of times. Talk talk to me. Did you watch the fight? Yes, and she met her match, but she's one dimensional. She was a judo person, and she got caught up in going toe to toe with a couple of these girls that actually put her on her back. I think that, uh, you know, what if, you, if somehow or another you've been living under a, a rock and you didn't know, Amanda Nunes knocked out uh, Ronda Rousey in under a minute. In 48 seconds on Saturday night at UFC 207. You have to give love for Ronda, to Ronda Rousey for, um, you have to give love for Ronda Rousey for putting female boxing or female UFC on the map. Right. Dana White has expressed in the past that he didn't he wasn't really high on it. he didn't like to watch it I, neither do I to be no, honest I don't like women beating each other up like that I don't like anybody beating women up to be honest no. so including other women so uh I you know I watched for the sake of the podcast and it was funny I put up on my Twitter it, it, all of you guys who follow me you saw it before the fight I'd spoken to a lot of our UFC correspondents and everybody seemed to think that she was going to get beat up it, it seemed like it wasn't even a, like a, it wasn't a secret and she was a, a, a almost a two to one favorite, which is amazing to me. They, the Vegas, Free money. Vegas gave away money on Saturday night, and selling her name and selling her name, and she went in there. She had the, uh, you know, she had the faux tough face and the faux confidence, and she went in there and got beat up. You could see from the first punch landed. The first punch landed was a jab that snapped her neck like she had taken a uh, uh, like hit with a sledgehammer, and then she turned into Roy Jones. I see. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know about that. I can't I, go that I, far. That's the way I felt because it was looking like she was trying not to get knocked out. She wasn't trying to win at that point. Yeah, but that insinuates Roy Jones was a bum, and that that was a certain part of Roy Jones' career, which really after he got knocked out, he should be absolved from because he shouldn't <laughs> even because he shouldn't even have had to go up in at that time period for that twelve to fifteen year period. If Roy Jones stays at one sixty, one sixty five, even one seventy, nobody beats up Roy Jones at all whatsoever. And Roy Jones took it upon himself to find fights to go up and wait and then he started fooling around with the big boys <laughs> who disconnected his power yeah. and then uh yeah and then he had that then he had that then he started fighting See, not to win but just not to get knocked out it was like a, it's like a thing that she went through where you want to prove to yourself that you're not going to get you know that you can take it and she got hit hard and she didn't get on her horse or run or anything but she wasn't together she after, wasn't together after, immediately she yeah, wasn't immediately. like she was like she was discombobulated she was in the wilderness she was in the wilderness <laughs> immediately charles green she was out there and 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 i i'm with nunes nunes said this afterwards uh yeah because she thinks she's a boxer he put this in her head and made the girl believe that i don't know why he did that she has great judo, and then she can go more forward in this division. But he put some crazy thing about her in her head about boxing, and then her career started to go down. And this is talking about her coach, Tarvedian. She works out over in Glendale. Mm -hmm. Actually, the Roman Emperor, uh, I do believe, uh, took me down to that gym one time, Roman Metician. And, um, you know, I don't know, as a team member, what did you work on for 12 months? 
Probably judo and then getting in a boxing match. <laughs> well, why would you do that? So you now, need to get it on the ground. That should be our whole goal. I mean, even bull if you, rush, something. Yeah, bull rush. Even if I have to take a couple of punches. But I, after she took the first punch, it was over. Yeah, but you know, maybe you put your head down, you get her on the yeah, ground, and then yeah. we can start doing that whole little grappling thing. Yeah, but, and but make her tap out. Yeah, make her tap out. That's how she won her other fights in the past. But going toe to toe with these women, she doesn't even have a chance. It doesn't even look like it's fair. She doesn't look like a professional. Well, there's a lot of talk about how, you know, once she opened it up, these other athletes passed her by, and that's why these women who actually have four and five losses on their record are able to touch her up is because they realize if she's the mark, one thing they can do is outbox her. This girl, I won't even say this girl boxed her. This girl literally just went in there and beat her up. Right. It looked like a barroom fight. Yeah, it did. Yeah. She, and it wasn't it wasn't like super technique or anything like that. Yeah. She was just throwing one, two combinations and a feint here and there and just punished her. And then a haymaker. And, and Ronda Rousey never moved her head. She didn't even, she never moved her head. I think it was the shock and awe. I mean, she got clocked yeah. on her chin, and you could see that it was, it was like, where am I going to land? She was thinking to herself, where am I going to land? I don't know what she was thinking because it seemed like she was out of it. It seemed like she wasn't thinking anything. But, uh, you know, I just, I think that it's a, it's, you seen LeBron James and Kobe Bryant came out supporting her, saying the media builds you up to tear you down. You know what? This is, I think, even though I think that LeBron James may be, may, maybe deserves a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, this is one time I think I might have to disagree with the King, even though he's right about himself and about the media, because they, if you remember last year in the finals, they were talking about how he was an old man and right. blah, 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 all this kind of nonsense. But this, this go around, Ronda Rousey ascended in the sport and put this sport on the map. And in 12 fights, there was nonsense going around talking about how she could beat Floyd Mayweather up. It's ridiculous. Nonsense. And, and she so, bought into the hype, though. Yeah. That's and, one and, of the major problems. And, and I think this is why the backlash has been so strong against Ronda Rousey. When I put up on, on Twitter, hey, it seems like a lot of people seem to think that Ronda Rousey is going to get knocked out tonight. I mean, the overwhelming response, I would say like 80% to 20% is, I hope she does. People wanted to see her get beat up for whatever reason, as if what Holly Holm did to her wasn't enough. Yeah, but you know, she's cocky and arrogant, and, yeah. and people really don't like that. You yeah. Know, even when she beat, You like it to a certain extent. Yeah, but when she beats some of the, the guys— Because people love it yeah. when people like Kobe Bryant yeah. and people like Floyd Mayweather. Yeah, when, when she beat some of the gals earlier, you know, she was disrespectful. She's disrespectful afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, and that's not right. And, and it comes back to bite you. It does. It does. You really do reap what you sow. There's just no way to get around it. And nobody felt bad for it, really. I feel bad for it just because she bought into her own hype. And now she has to be on suicide watch, you know, because she doesn't seem to me to be the person that could take a loss like that and just grow from it. It, it seems like I know that she said she wants to get out of the sport, but does she really want to finish like that? And then once she does come back, if she does come back, can she take not being, you know, Ronda Rousey, the 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 terror, the threat. I just want to know why you put her in against the number one champion. Why did she you needs do a that? cream puff? You even if it's not a cream puff, you just need. She needs a cream puff. You don't, after you don't, the you don't knockout need the like number one. Yeah, you don't need the definitely don't need the. You number don't need one. number one. I need somebody that you can jump in, put the judo on, and lock you up and get out of there fast. Yeah. And now she has her confidence because Calais just got through talking about confidence. It's crucial. Yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. You got to have your confidence together in professional sports and in life. You know, if you don't believe, nobody's going to believe. It's true. And you have to manifest that power that you have of, of, of speaking things that are not as though they are because it's a it's a real thing. And, you know, in this situation, you could see Ronda Rousey didn't believe. That girl came in the ring and, like, this, there was a, a little frame that they took right before the fight started. She looked so loose and limber. She was just like, it was like, she said, man, I'm about to go out for a walk in the park. It's a sunny day. There was she had no doubt that she was going to put tips on Ronda Rousey. It looked like she thought the fight was going to be more difficult, right? But uh, but she had no doubt that she was going to be the one. This girl's a champion, and she got paid a hundred thousand dollars plus a hundred thousand dollar bonus for winning. Ronda Rousey got knocked out in her last fight and got paid three million dollars. That kind of thing makes you a little bit bitter. Hello, even though Ronda Rousey's the one selling the pay per view, I understand that. I right. get it. Uh, but man, man, that was that's that's a serious thing. Wow. It's real. And where does she go, you know? Uh, there was another guy who won uh, that actually right before that fight on UFC 207, uh, Corey Garbrandt, and it was, man, that guy put on a clinic. Wow. I don't know if you watched it. The no, fight, I didn't, but, but fight, I didn't the, see the fight, Yeah, the, the fight before the main event was a challenger versus a champ. The champ had won 13 straight, and the challenger was Cody. <clears throat> he went in there and got busy. 
and he fought this dude and he again was a boxer and the other guy was trying to get on the ground and he used superior swim moves uh parry techniques all of these things that they teach you in boxing that he used it to his advantage and superior footwork never was off balance and sat down on his punches and put tips on the champ for five rounds and even when he even when he got the champ on his back he refused to go in for that UFC pound that people like to do because he didn't even want to tussle with him on the ground. He just went in there and just continued to punish him and cut up his face. Man, <laughs> it was... Ugh. And then it was beautiful because then right afterwards, he's a part of the Make-A-Wish Foundation and he gave his belt to a kid uh, from the Make-A-Wish oh, in the awesome. ring. Yeah, and the yeah. kid wanted the kid. The kid wanted to... Here, let's see if we can find the interview. Maddox, when they said and knew, what'd you think? I was just blown away because it was a dream for us to um, get the belt and I was just so happy for us and I it was just emotional. You jumped so high in that octagon. Yeah, yeah I, I was just so excited. I couldn't help to just start clapping and cheering. What does this mean for you to get this to him? You know, it means the world. It's something that uh, you know, it was a dream for my for me since I was a teenager and uh, I met Maddox five and a half years ago at his some of his worst times. And he re redirected my faith and direction. I wouldn't be here without him. So my dream became his dream, and it became our dream together. And we, you know, you know, was along this journey since amateur days, and here we are now. We kept this dream in our heart to be a world champion, and be able to have him this belt for him, and, and everything he's overcame. And it's been amazing. This is the best night of my life. I had fun in there. I would, I would love to do another five rounds and do it all over again. What was your heart like during this fight? I mean, it was a back and forth. It was nervous. I was nerve wracking because it was like Cody, Cody punched and Dom punched, but then Cody got him, and I was just, I knew he was going to win, so I was, I felt a lot better. Were you screaming during the fight? Yeah, a lot. What does this guy mean to you? He means everything to me, you know. He helped me beat cancer, and I don't know what I would do without him. And what are you going to do with that belt? Um, well, we got a spot in the man cave, and it's going to go right there, so. That sound good to you, Cody? Sounds, that's a wonderful place for it. I know he's going to take care of it. Well, congratulations to you guys. And uh, your story, it's, it's a really special one. And we, we couldn't be happier for you. And everyone on social media loves you, and, and they're very happy for you. Becoming a champion tonight with your best friend. Right. Yep. It's awesome. Well, that's, that is awesome. That's the right. ma mastering the art of giving. That's unbelievable. What a great way to go into 2017, being generous. You know, that that's just like, wow. How do you lose with that? That's, right. That's awesome. Both of them probably feel really great on the inside. So good. They probably feel so good that you're right, on the inside. Yeah. So much to life. So much of life is giving, you know? It's just uh it's just unbelievable. That that was that was great. That you know how stuff. far that rolls on, you know, he changed that kid's life and then that, that kid's probably gonna change someone else's life. And you know, it, it's just awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cycle. And again, it kind of goes back to what Calais was saying about momentum. True story. That's the theme. It is. Momentum. Momentum. This is, this is the theme of the ozone. Momentum, baby. They can't hold us. Let it roll. Let it roll on the ozone. Well, you know what I want to do now? Uh, I want to. I want to check in. I think we have a. Uh, I think we have a couple messages. Maybe we can listen to a message before we move on to our uh, our college football segment. Hello, this is Alicia. We're going to call this the Wobble Report. I just want to talk about what's really going on in the world of sports, in my opinion. First off, Ronda Rousey. I feel bad for her. Um, I know she came out strong and trained and thought she could come back, you know, and regain the title. I think she came out with a little bit too much confidence. And um, Amanda Nunez was able to shut her up in less than a minute. I think she should retire. I know LeBron James came out supporting her, talking about how they build you up just to tear you down. But the difference is she built herself up and she wasn't ready to come back to such a strong fighter. Also, speaking of LeBron James, I don't think he gets as much credit as he should for what he accomplished in Cleveland. Until he and the Cavaliers won, Cleveland felt that they were cursed. Um, LeBron was able to silence the naysayers and hasn't been surrounded by scandals uh, and didn't need somebody like a Kobe Bryant to be considered awesome. In my opinion, he's much better uh, as an athlete than Sha Shaq ever was. Last but not least, the NFL I think the Packers will beat the Giants, but they won't beat the Cowboys. Seattle will easily beat the Lions. The Steelers will eliminate the Patriots and go on to the Super Bowl against the Cowboys. 
Now, I know Cowboy Kev is probably going to disagree with this statement, <laughs> but in my opinion, the Steelers are going to beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. And there you have the wobble report. Wow. Wow. Bold call in there from Alicia in the wobble report. She even made her own report. I like that. We're going to have to get All a hold right. of her and get her involved. Jeez. That was serious business. Uh, that right was serious there. business. And she sounded so serious. Loosen it up. Why, why are you so mad about your sports? I know we're going into playoff season, but relax. Uh, I think when she you covered a lot, she covered a lot. I mean, I, I'm I, some bold predictions, which I always like when people step out and they're bold. Right. I mean, that she likes that steel curtain a lot. Everybody does. They're gelling right now. They look great. Magellan. They're going in hot. I think seven straight. They won. You can step Le'Veon Bell down anybody's, anybody's throat. throat. <laughs> what are you going to do? You can't choke him. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get Le'Veon, Le'Veon out of my throat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a, that's, that's interesting. Wow. Wow. At least you know the Wobble Report. I don't know how true this is, but they said Le'Veon Bell hasn't even played in the playoff game before. I don't think it's going to matter when he plays. <laughs> I think he can play whatever, and as long as right. he's playing and they give him the pill, he's a problem. He's a problem. And and uh, I, wow, I think he would have been a problem earlier if he wouldn't have been if he would have been playing. You know, that might have changed the course of their season, but maybe he worked out for him at the right time. Um, I also think that to to go along with what she's saying, wow. So she thinks the Cowboys get to the dance. It seems like the Ozone is in general is feeling like the Falcons got work for them. Um, I'm not even sure that they beat Seattle personally, but uh, we'll see what happens there. We just have to sit and wait and see how that plays out. And to LeBron James, I agree. I mean, this guy. I mean, you just heard me say it. This guy. This guy could get solid he, he, because he's reaching out so far beyond the sport. He successfully transcended the sport, and he's willing to speak on the issues. Whereas most guys are not. I mean, I think he recognizes the the platform that he has and how much is at stake. And he's not afraid. And he's not afraid, and that's a key. And I, I like to hear other other listeners having something to say about it because it, I can't say enough about this dude. Uh, we just covered the Ronda Rousey scenario. Ronda, I think I, I agree with uh, I agree with uh, the Wobble Report on that one. She she should wrap it up. I don't think that there's a future there in for, yeah in UFC. for what what does she need to do? What is, why does she need what to she, go out to, there she put she she put the sport on the map for women, right. which is huge. There's no that's not even in question. She you raised know? the bar. She raised the bar. She set the bar. Set so, the arm bar. So, they're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. She set the arm bar there. The only thing that I got a problem with uh, Wobble Reporter out there is. I don't know what kind of gibberish you were talking about. Kobe <laughs> being better than Shaq. I don't know what that you you must not listen to the to the ozone. This is big man basketball all day out <laughs> here. 2017 first shout out to my man, the late great Laker Quick. I wish he was here to defend that the, the buffoonery, but I'll do it for him. <laughs> there was ten other dudes that could have been what Kobe Bryant was in the early 2000s and late 90s if That's he true. played on those teams, those Laker teams. And I, I just can't, or, or close to it, maybe not to the greatness that Kobe Bryant did, but I also watch Kobe Bryant shoot the Lakers out of games with the hopes of him shooting them back in him, which he, he did sometimes. And a lot of times he didn't, and it hurt the team, and they couldn't gel, and he had all those personal issues and whatnot. Um, the diesel was a diesel everywhere he went. He was always a factor. He took his show on the road, and his teams were always competing for the championship. Just by every standing in the middle. single time, even when he was beat up, old diesel. Diesel, as he says now on TNT, barbecue chicken. If you give Diesel <laughs> the ball in the post, you got problems. Even if you don't give him the ball in the post, just let him hang out around the rim. You got problems. He's too big. If you ever meet him, you recognize the guy is a real life giant. It's like it's it's unbelievable. But I want to thank our caller. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you for the wobble report. We're nice gonna, call. Nice call. We're gonna figure out a way to to see if you. We'll see what your predictions look like this week, and if uh, if they come together, perhaps we'll have you more involved in the show. But thank you for the call. Thank you for the call. And I just wanted to thank Melissa's Organic Produce for creating the Clean Snack Series because I had some clean snacks over the holidays. You can get them at uh, Gelson's, maybe even Trader Joe's. But if you go to Melissa's Produce, um, you can find where you get them. I mean, these, these things are delicious. Absolutely delicious. Did you have them? No. Oh, it's a snack, you know, but it's full of just, it's full of organic, natural grains. and, and you Healthy. Know, it's a healthy snack. Uh, got good sugars and blah 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 and it's uh, just delicious stone cold delicious well want to move into the last piece we don't usually cover this much but uh but uh want to move into this last piece on the ozone today which is the college football bowl series showtime showtime it's going down right now as we sit out in pasadena usc is up on uh, penn state 13 to 7 and uh that's interesting because 
SC is playing at home, but they're a lower ranked team. So this is going to be uh, this will be a real win for them if they can wrap up the season like this. You know, a lot of talk surrounding that kid, uh, Adoree Jackson, mm. and whether he's what what his plan is afterwards. Adoree, he's a local. He's been reported by our own homegrown uh, D one bound sports and college level athletes for years and years now, even before he signed there. Now let me ask you this: going to be interesting to see what Adoree Jackson does. Local, I want him to get to the league and get paid. Oh yeah, no question. That's going to happen. But let me ask you this: for a football purist, do you think college or NFL? You know what? Oh, but you, right, at, right on time for that question. We have a caller who may be able to answer. Next victim, you're live on the Ozone. How you feeling out what there? What up? Happy 2017. And hey, let's make it a winner. 2016 was in the toilet, but we all learned a lot. Let's make 2017. Let's take it to a higher ground. Higher. <laughs> you gotta take it higher. That's it. <laughs> Absolutely. How everybody doing today? Great. Life is good, man. We're having a great spirited edition of the Ozone. Uh, just got off the line with all pro Arizona Cardinals tackle Calais Campbell. He laced us up with some very interesting NFL knowledge and predictions. And um, right. yeah, and right now we want to speak to you about uh, college football bowl season. College football <laughs> bowl time. Bowl time. Here we go. Or is it roll it time? Going down. <laughs> Talk to me. Give me yes, give me a hot is. take. What do, what do you feel about what's going on right now? Love the bowl season. I love Penn State over the mighty Trojans. Ooh. Just because of the, all the Sandusky stuff, I believe that uh, Penn State is just playing at a high level to be at the Rose Bowl for the past couple of years and everything that's gone down with the program. I got to go with Penn State. That's for real. Um, next week, everybody knows Alabama is in the national championship, but one of the big moves that took place is with um, – uh, Lane Kiffin yes. dropped right before the uh, the big game. I was trying to read some of the remarks that Nick Saban was saying, saying, you know, it's best that we just part ways. But I think that plays a big – just uh, earlier in the Ozone, I said, who did I believe in? Clemson. You sure Clemson did. Clemson is in the national championship past two years. With this one taking place, <laughs> hey, I still got to go with them Tigers. T- Tigers wow. and upset. Upset. Alabama. Upset City. Yes, sir. Oh, I may have to look into it. making a wager. Now, why is that? Come on, man. Why is when that? You, when you when you go and give Ohio State the stinky boo boo in a playoff game, yeah, donut, sure. donut. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, now, tell me this though. Yeah, uh, Icons just had a great question right before you called, and it was as a foot from a football purist perspective. Do you think you choose college or the NFL game? Me, I like. Uh, College, really? college until until the playoffs. The last couple of weeks of the NFL, that's when the, that's when uh, professional gets real. You know, it's like they're playing for the contracts, but then there's so many teams and so much going on. Once it gets to late December, and you know, with the NFL, everything starts you know bearing down. That's when it starts getting serious. But for me, that's when college football starts ending. Hmm. With all the bowl games, but I like just the just the overall passion of uh, and the history of, of college sports. Wow, well, that's interesting. And now tell me this: I have a I have a question for you. I mean, I was I wanted to speak about Lane uh, Kiffin, but you already covered it. But I have a question for you on the college front. How do you feel about all of these young players now sitting out these bowl games? Hey, man, why not? Yeah, I love it. Me personally, I love it. Because they're not getting paid. The schools are getting paid extra for these bowl games. And the chance of how many times have we seen a marquee guy get served up in the bowl game and you get that McGahee. Exactly. And then it and then it changes the course of your life that you would have got drafted higher, you would have got paid. Man, you go from say you go from a first round draft pick to possibly not even being drafted. Undrafted game. Yep, and the coaches are still going to get these millions of dollars. The schools are still going to get these millions of dollars, and hey, it's a business. So with these kids, you know, deciding not to play this one game, hey, they made a business decision for their life. And, and I can't be mad at them for that. Be mad at that. Not and because because they served, they served to even they get served. to the point of of making that decision. Right. And if the school I wants agree. them to pay, pay them. In some way, you got to do something, or at least give them an insurance contract yeah, against them being something. high draft or something. 
Right. Because these schools, all they want you to do is, you know, they want you to get to the national championship. If you don't get to the national championship, what's the next best thing? To make it to a bowl. These kids have been served all year. 10, 12 games practice, you know, during the season. So, hey, sit out one game. You, know, you made it. They did their part. They made it to the bowl. I made they it to the your bowl. Team, your school make it to the bowl. Right. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, I I, there, I think this situation is going to get uh, to come to its head soon because I don't think that you're going to be able to keep paying these kids in scholarships, if you will, while coaches are making millions of dollars, while the school is making hundreds of millions of dollars, and the players are getting an education, which for uh, all three of us on the line right now, having either played or been totally affiliated with college sports, you recognize you ain't getting the same education as an individual who's just signed up that's not uh, there for, for exactly. sports. Exactly. Because the coach right. is the first one. What did the coach tell you when you went to, <laughs> to college? I did not bring you out here to go to school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the coach told this young man that he, he brought him out there to steal bags and to play baseball. He didn't bring him out there to go to class. So there's no excuse for coming right. late to practice. There's no excuse for all this other stuff. And uh, and I, they're gonna have to do something. I don't. They're gonna have to come create a stipend. They're gonna have to do something because there's too much at stake. The whole purpose of going to college is to find a career. Now these guys have found their career, right? And now you're you're gonna put them in harm's way, even though you guys eat off them. I mean, really, when you look at it, it's very American. <laughs> it's a very American, like a uh, lightweight sharecropping kind of system. <laughs> when you really look at it, it is. But but take take it out this way, you know, with the Alabama whole thing and, and Lane Kiffin, and no one's mad or saying anything about Nick Saban making the business move and saying, you know, Lane Kiffin, you can roll. But huh. if the kid decides he don't want to roll that last game, they saying, oh, it's a bad move for the kid to to not play in that bowl game. But it's okay for an adult for Lane Kiffin to roll. Right. Come on, man. Wow. Come on. No one no one's speaking up on that. It's like, come on, that, that's 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 nasty. That leaves a, a real bitter taste. It does, and it's not right. I mean, it just we got to get back to like things the that are just feel right. Like they're doing something. The schools feel like they're doing something for the kids by allowing them to put the jerseys on and go out there and win these football games. And alumni is coming and paying them under the table, and the school is paying them under the table, or whatever. But for a kid to decide, hey, I don't want to jeopardize my million dollar signing bonus. To not play one more game. Hey, if I tear my knee up or my ankle up in in the the combine or something like that, so be it. But for this one game, I don't want to play. Let me take that chance on not playing and tearing it up in the NFL uniform. Right. Well, at least I got something. I got something. Yep. If it's just a memory. <laughs> if it's just memory to be able to say I made it to the league. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. But I gotta roll. I gotta roll with them Tigers this year. Well, there it is. Upset City Tigers. All right, next yeah, victim. I'm ready to go to Vegas. Well, <laughs> we might need to ride out. Very <laughs> always, always a tempting proposition for a turnaround. <laughs> and get smoked out right. with the homies' love, and go out there and, and feel like I smoked eight packs of Marlboro Reds <laughs> just for throwing the dice for fifteen minutes <laughs> with a stogie on top. <laughs> Ugh, my goodness, Las Vegas, get your life together. <laughs> all right now well happy new year thanks for calling into the ozone we always appreciate your participation uh and we will catch you soon to see if your prediction see how it panned out absolutely happy 2017 ozone let's uh, get it in be safe likewise what a great edition of the ozone what a way to start it off really really happy folks we're happy to be here we're happy that you're rocking with us this has been a great time i just one more piece that I want to cover that I feel like it really, really got swept under the rug. And, you know, it, it's something that uh, you're going to have to make your own decision on. But, you know, George Carl, he's putting out his book and he said something the other day that caused a real row about Kenyon Martin and, and Carmelo Anthony being immature and lazy in essence and. Kenyon Martin fired back with, everybody knows I didn't have a dad, so what's your excuse for being a terrible person? And There's a lot of bickering that went on. But when you sifted through those headlines, there was something that I saw that was very, very interesting to me. What did you see? I saw George Carl put out a blip, and I want to read the book because of this, where he said 
the NFL, not the NFL. NBA. He said the NFL is a great sport. No. <laughs> he, he said that. He said the NBA has a massive steroid abuse problem. And I tend to agree with him, to be honest. We've always spoke about that. If you meet professional basketball players, guys, they're bigger than anybody that you may think is big. Football players, you know. In the NBA yeah. guys are giants, They're literal man. giants. Some of them are long and lean and skinny. But there's a lot of big, thick dudes out there in the NBA that are like that are Nephilims. That are, yeah, <laughs> seriously, they look like they're related to Goliath. And these guys, man, the way that they heal, uh, some of them, if you look at their definition, it it's reminiscent of baseball in the '90s. It's true when guys were, you know, their heads were expanding and their 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 muscles were a little bit too ripped. And you got these little guys jumping out of the gym. And you you have to it makes you it it begs you to pose the question. So is this genetics? Is it evolution, or is there some tampering going on? And I think George Carl brings up a a, a point that's worth debate, and it's going to be interesting to hear if they ever do anything about it. I remember a couple of years ago they said that they were going to start testing for growth hormone for artificial for synthetic growth hormone. I don't know if they ever implemented that. I don't know either. Uh, you know, it's it's a great area in basketball. It seems though, because you have seems guys- like they don't test. They test for for weed, right? And maybe. <laughs> and these guys are going overseas to get certain surgeries or situations fixed, and they come back over here and start playing again. And it's legal, you know, things that they can't do over here. They're doing over there and coming back and playing. Right, and they're healing. It seems like the steroid Crazy fast. use is all about healing. I would think so, but then it's also about that big contract because that's I think that that's why you see some of these guys doing that contract year. Oh man, they just, just show up to the next level you in know? every sport. Yeah, you're like, what the hell's going on? And, and, and there's you just there's no way you can turn a blind eye to that. No. And I'm not for I'm not one for you know accusing people with uh, without some sort of backing. So I you know naming names for guys without backing. Right, I think that's pretty whack. But I think it's a very safe thing to say that if they started to do serious testing in the NBA like they do in Major League Baseball, I think we'd be pretty surprised at the guys that popped up as, you know, as uh, uh, performance enhancing users. Now, let me ask you this. What's the harm in it in basketball? That's a good question. I mean, uh, a lot of egos get hurt by some monster dunks. Right. <laughs> I can tell you that. You'll guys, get over it after guys, you get that paycheck. Guys get dipped on. And uh, I don't I mean, ultimately, it's about putting the best possible product on the court. There's there's always that health concern. And I mean, half the guys in the NBA seem like they have a poor diet anyways, just with the way that their skin looks. But I can't really call what the major danger is. But I think that if you have a guy that was in the NBA, George Carl was a coach in the NBA for at least 20 years, right? At least. And, and I think that this is a guy speaking out. It kind of puts me in the mind of Jose Canseco when Jose Canseco tipped the lid off of Major League Baseball and everybody laughed him out of the gym at first. Everybody laughed him off the field at first. And then you started to see there was some investigative journalist who decided to go and check it out. And you started to see, hey, this is a serious thing. This is a real deal. This is a real deal. These guys are actually using this stuff. And it'd be interesting if they did a Mitchell Report kind of scenario to say, hmm, Let's go. Let's let's have a non consequential random test series to see who's using and who's not to see if we have a problem, and then from this point forward we'll say, well, this is illegal. That's illegal. In the NBA, the NBA doesn't seem to be as stat driven. The stats aren't as hallowed as they are in say like a football or especially in baseball. Uh, the records aren't as hallowed um, in in that same sense. So I don't know if it would have the same devastation. Basketball is the perfect sport for America because it's a totally instant gratifying sport. It's it is right now. It's one of the reasons I really believe that baseball has waned in popularity. But then every October, baseball shows why it's the best game ever invented. Right, is because it's strategy, it's skill, it's also mental focus and preparation. There's so many factors, and then there's the 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 the, the unknown as well that happens. Crazy things happen. You know, guys like a hit, rain delay, <laughs> like a rain delay. Or like a, a coach running out a guy four days straight and he throws 170 miles an hour, yet he gives up a grand slam in the eighth inning. All kind of crazy things happen it's in true. sports, in baseball. But I think that in in these other sports, it won't have the same impact. It's almost like it's expected for you to use steroids in the NFL, I feel like. Uh, I would. <laughs> There's no way I could run out around with those guys out there and not, not be on the juice. Can you imagine how fast you would be if you used oh steroids? Oh my goodness, are you crazy? 
four two four on with no juice. Four two four off of chicken and rice. And <laughs> and, and, and uh, wow. then you get the hill. Are you kidding? You might be able to break the. You might. You Sound might, barrier. You might. <laughs> you might have gave him that four zero. Oh, you might have gave him four flat. Wow. Well, folks, thanks for rocking with us. We really appreciate you on the Ozone. We're growing. We have an action packed lineup for you this year. We're all about consistency and prosperity and momentum, folks. Thanks for rocking with us, and let's make 2017 a wonderful year. And for that, I'm going to leave you with a quote from Vern McClellan. What the new year brings to you will depend a great deal on what you bring to the new year. Keep it positive, folks. This is Omar Miller, your host. Ozone. Ozone. Here's a chance to dance our way out of our constriction. Up and down the hang-up alleyway With a groove I only got We shall all be moved Ready or not